So this particular ID grinder was not in service for many, many years. We took it, uh, uh, we took it out of service, brought it back into service. We kind of rebuilt it a little bit. We rescraped the ways and so forth. And in doing so, we made some assumptions that were wrong. And remember we talked about that in one of the videos about make sure you don't make an assumption that whoever used the machine last left it in a good working order. Well, let me tell you what we did because it's kind of an interesting uh, uh, process that we went through to fix it. We thought that the chuck that we had on here and the adapter and the faceplate all were square and were working the way they should have. Well, it wasn't quite so. We went back and we mounted this chuck on there in an adapter and we found out that it ran out and we couldn't figure out why it was running out. Well, you didn't have to be a brain surgeon to figure that out, but it was the faceplate which was running out. And I mean, it was running out like this. It wasn't, it was probably 15 thousandths or so. So when we had our chuck on there, we start getting this movement. We said, what the heck's going on? We thought it might have been the adapter. We took the adapter off, found out it wasn't either. It was a faceplate. So we decided that the simplest thing to do and the best thing to do was to take the faceplate back off and reseat it and see if that helped. That didn't make any difference. It still ran out. So we knew we had to grind the faceplate. How were we going to grind the faceplate? Well, the easiest way to do it was to use a wheel about this size. And I don't know if you can see that, but Jim, can you get a shot of that, I think? Mm -hmm. uh, we, what I did was I dished, you got it there? Tip, tip side a little bit so you can see it. About like that? So I dish this wheel out. What do I mean by that? Let me go to the whiteboard and I'll show you. You take the wheel, which looks something like this, and of course with a hole in here for the, for the nut, and another hole here for the threads to go through. And right here, I relieve this like so. And by doing that, I had a point here, and that is what I ground the faceplate with, was right here. All of this was relieved. That makes it a problematic in that this point will break down as you're grinding. So you'll notice that I will have to continually go in here and relieve this area and get this point sharp again. Now, the quill that I used happens to be this guy. And I like this quill because it's beefy right in here. Look at this one. This is so skinny in here, and I'm not sure why this quill was made this way, frankly, but it's so skinny in here that it would chatter all over the place. So this would not have been a good choice. This was a good choice for doing that. So here you can see the difference between the two wheels. Again, Jim, can you get a good shot of that? The one on your right has not been relieved. The one on the quill on the left side has been relieved in the middle, and that's what we used, or we're, what we're going to use to grind the faceplate uh, of this ID grinder. So let's wrap it up. Let's go in the back, and we're going to show you how we're going to do it. K uh, grinding wheel, which we're just I'm just now mounting on the uh, quill and giving it a snug. Now keep in mind that uh, the wheel itself does not necessarily have to be dressed on the outside. Uh, right here, I'm dishing out the face, so we'll have a sharp outer edge. So I'm relieving the middle part of the wheel. And uh, right here, I'm just touching the outside edge, which really isn't necessary because we're not going to be using the face of the or that, that part of the wheel. We're going to be using the face. Uh, but I'm just cleaning up a little bit because it, sometimes when it's out of round, it gives a little bit of a vibration, so I just thought it would be nice to touch it up. All right, so I've got the faceplate running on the slowest speed that it will turn. And we're going to come in here and hit the face on the outside edge. So that wheel is overlapping the outside. It's a little, now there we go. You can see where it's starting to grind. It's a little challenging uh, to uh, bring this in and not break down the face of the wheel. And by the way, this is not actual speed. We're running this at 
I think two what is it eight times, eight times normal speed Jim uh, and here I'm redressing again as it got a little bit dull and why are we running at eight times speed because we just didn't want to bore you with all this grinding time uh, you can see it right here I'm stopping it periodically to see where it's cleaned up and where it's not cleaned up and you can see the top left hand corner at about 10 o'clock there was not cleaned up yet and there's a uh, what I would call a witness mark uh, you can see there's a kind of a groove in there which isn't going to affect anything so uh, we're getting close now to getting that outside edge cleaned up and periodically again I'm going to stop and dress the wheel uh, again relieving the face a little bit I'm pretty comfortable right now with the fact that this is just about cleaned up and uh, again you see that mark in there uh, towards the outer edge it doesn't really mean anything uh, it, it's it's a mark that's back relieved probably 10 thousandths deep but we don't have to take that off so we're going to ignore that here we're running at normal speed there you can see that that mark all the way around 9 10 11 o'clock so I felt it there and by the way this this faceplate's getting pretty warm at this point it's uh, it's kind of hot so I'm gonna pull this in pull the spindle in now and I'm gonna overlap the center just a bit and I'm gonna grind that part of it ouch like I said that's getting hot so I'm gonna grind that part of it right here and I'm gonna blend it and uh, with the part that I've just ground I want to make sure that we get the two of these blended evenly so we don't have a bump in there and th this is something that you don't need to do very uh, often this machine was not in service we took it out and uh, we took it and put it back in service we rebuilt it uh, and one of the things that we didn't do at this point was we didn't check the uh, uh, the faceplate so we got out there and we started to use it and found out that the faceplate was was not square and was way out of round so uh, that's why we're going through this procedure now my hands are not as close to the faceplate as it appears to be folks so don't be uh, too concerned that it's dangerous because it's running because it's it's quite a ways away although it doesn't look it and there again I just sharpen up the edge again I relieve the middle of the wheel slightly so uh, the outer edge of the wheel is what's doing the cutting and uh, again I put a little bit of crayon and I'm not a real big fan of using crayon because it does tend to load up the wheel but uh, a little bit here uh, doesn't seem to make that much difference uh, it, I don't see it loading up the wheel frankly because we're not putting enough on there so you can see the sparks and it's it's probably pretty pretty much cleaned up now but it's still protruding above the prior uh, face that I just ground so we want to make sure that we get this ground uh, so the two faces or the two areas that I'm grinding are flush with one another we don't need a hump in there and you might ask why are we grinding a faceplate well if we're gonna bolt a product on there or perhaps a uh, bolt of an angle plate or a v-block the faceplate needs to be square with the work surface if it's not you know, obviously you know what's going to happen your parts not going to come out right so we found that it was necessary because this faceplate was so far off it was probably off about 10 10 to 12 thousands I think Jim wasn't it there may be yeah. more maybe even more than that and uh, which is unusual I don't quite understand how it could possibly be that far off but we we pulled the faceplate off the machine we cleaned up the surfaces and we put it back together and uh, it that's the way it came out it was still off uh, way more than it needs to be when we're done here we'll probably have it uh, within I, I would guess within a few tenths probably three four five tenths of being uh, flat and square which is what we need to have later on we're going to mount an adapter on to the faceplate and with that adapter we're going to be putting a three jaw chuck on there and we'll show you that uh, in, uh, in a little bit but here we are again relieving the wheel once more sharpening that edge uh, if you don't keep it sharp it just generates so darn much heat that it becomes uh, uh, useless you're not grinding it you're, what you're doing mainly is generating heat and not removing stock so I like to keep that edge of the wheel pretty sharp and again coming in here if you come in too fast 
you hit the wheel, you break down the, you hit the faceplate, rather you break down the face of the wheel, you notice that was a nice gentle approach. Now you could put an indicator on there too to see what you're doing, but I still have a pretty good feel, so I didn't, uh, didn't see that it was necessary to put an indicator on there to see when I'm approaching uh, the wheel. But that's another way to do that. So uh, an indicator is a good way to do it if you're not comfortable with, uh, with your skill set at this point. So we're gonna, when we're done here with this face or this part of the face, I'm going to take a third cut, which will be right in the middle between the two, just to make sure that we've got it cleaned up and that we've got, we don't have a step in uh, there. I'm checking it here, to, yep, just a little bit of a step in there yet, so we want to get rid of that step. We're pretty close. But I, you'd be surprised. You can feel, you can feel within uh, uh, a few tenths, really three, four, five tenths. You'd be surprised at your fingernail how sensitive it is. If there's a step in there, you'll feel it with your fingernail. So we're getting close now. Yeah, I think that's that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to uh, redress the wheel here again. Put a nice point on that outer edge. So I'm going to relieve the middle again. And you'll notice the piece of carborundum that I, I'm using has a sharp edge. <laughs> All right, so the wheel's good and sharp now. And uh, now we got a yellow marker there. You know, I use yellow or red. I think either one is one's as good as the other. I, I think red gives you a little more uh, identity than the yellow does. The yellow is a little harder to see, plus it tends to get pick up dirt and get dirty. There, well, you can see the yellow there on the faceplate. And you know, these again, these th this is something you only have to do uh, once in a while. I mean, this is when when the machine. If you believe that the faceplate's out of square, then that's something else. You you know, you why would it get out of square? Either because somebody took it off and put it back on, didn't put it back on uh, right, i.e., it wasn't clean, or uh, perhaps it was. Uh, it was, there was a crash and somehow it got bent. But those are the only reasons why you would really have to do this. Again, this is not something you need to do on a regular basis. I think if, unless there's an extreme reason to do it, i.e. a crash, uh, there's no need to do this. Or when you rebuild the machine, of course. Once it's rebuilt, then you need to go in and touch it up. We, we neglected to do that when we rebuilt the machine. I, I Frankly, I thought the it would not be anywhere near as out of square as it was. And when we got into it, we found out it was uh, way out of square. So that's why we decided to grind, had to grind a faceplate, not decide to, but we had to. And there I touch it up just a bit. And we'll come over here and touch up this side as well. And, and the reason we're doing this is because uh, this is what I would call a finish cut. The wheel's nice and sharp. And uh, if there's any irregularity in it, it'll find it. You'll be able to see it in the sparks. If you watch the sparks, they're pretty continuous. You don't see them. Uh, there, we, we call that counting sparks. And, and you can see the sparks are pretty even as it goes around. And I'm liking what I'm seeing there. So now we'll go in the uh, crank it back. And we'll go in between the two just to give it a touch to make sure that we don't that we do not have a step between the two and there now you see where the mark came onto the faceplate that tells me there's a mark on both sides the first cut that i made on the outside and the second cut that i made on the inside and i'm very very comfortable with that that that, that is good and flat and we've gotten rid of the step in there so that's the secret to grinding a faceplate looks pretty good I don't feel a step in there and it's kind of a cool look too that's how we uh, make sure that the faceplate is good and square flat parallel the way it should be so it's looking good right now okay so we ground our faceplate and I'm very happy with that I think we'll find that that is going to run within a few tenths as I mentioned earlier uh, what are we going to do next? Well, in our next video, we're going to mount an adapter. And why do we need an adapter? Because we're going to mount a chuck on there. And the adapter that we're going to be using will accept uh, a chuck that has the ability to adjust itself 
uh, that is that when we mount the chuck on there, it's going to go on a pilot, and we're going to show you all of that in our next video. And on that pilot, there's three screws that will push on that pilot or pull on it, so we can take that chuck and we can get it perfectly concentric. So we're going to grind the adapter as well. I'm going to grind the face of the adapter and the OD of the adapter. Uh, and it's, it, there's going to be about 20 thousandths clearance between the OD and the ID of the chuck. And we're going to show you all that when we do it. But the idea of that is to allow us to move that chuck in any direction that we want to get it concentric. Once we get it concentric, we're also going to show you how to grind the jaws of the chuck. And there's several ways to do it. There's really, in my view, there's only one way that you can get the kind of accuracy that we're looking for. What are we looking for? Well, we think we want to get the jaws to run within less than five tenths. Now, that's pretty challenging. And I might point out that it might, it might be five tenths at one inch in diameter, but when you get to two, it might not be. So you can grind the jaws wherever you might be, and we're going to show you exactly how to do that. So it will always be within a couple of tenths after you grind it, of course. So when you're going to grab your part and you want to hold it within two or three tenths, we're going to show you how to do it. So that'll be in our next video, and thanks for watching.